A phasor or phase vector is a vector rotating on a fixed axis that is used to graphically represent a periodic signal or a function. It has many applications in physics, electrical engineering, etc. But we will use it here to easily derive the equations of simple harmonic motion. Here, we have a vector that is rotating counterclockwise so that the phase or angle between the vector and the positive x-axis is increasing as the phasor rotates. Instead of degrees, I label the angles here in terms of SI unit, which is radian. Let me assume that this phasor serves as the displacement vector of an object rotating around the axis of the phasor. Now, if I illuminate this object with a series of flashlight as shown here below, I would like to see how the shadow of this object behaves on a screen or a wall like what is shown by this horizontal line above. When the flashlights are turned on, the shadow of the object on the horizontal line above looks like this. This back and forth motion of the shadow is similar to a back and forth motion of a spring block system on a frictionless floor. As we have previously discussed, this system depicts a simple harmonic motion. Therefore, we can use the projection of a phasor on a horizontal line, in this case it can be the x-axis, to derive the equations of simple harmonic motion. Let me grab a screenshot of this phasor together with these angles in radian. The projection or shadow of this phasor on this line is also the projection or shadow of this phasor on the x-axis. Let's symbolize the angle between the phasor and the x-axis as theta. Notice that when theta is equal to 0, the entire length of the phasor is projected on the x-axis and the displacement of the object from the origin is maximum. Therefore, let's label the length of this phasor as A to symbolize amplitude. So if we look at this axis here, when theta equals 0, it seems that the object is at its maximum. That's why we label the length of the phasor as A or amplitude. Now to generalize the displacement of the object, when we focus the projection on the x-axis, then x would be its displacement. Hence, we can write this using Pythagorean theorem as x equals A cosine theta. Now, if this object is rotating with an angular velocity of omega, then we can write this equation in terms of angular velocity. By the way, from the point of view of oscillation, we can also call omega as angular frequency. Recall that angular velocity is equal to the time derivative of the angular displacement. So if we consider an elapsed time like t, then this corresponds to a specific angular displacement theta in our figure. And I can rewrite this equation in terms of theta. This becomes theta equals omega t. And then I can plug this theta here. So we now have displacement is equal to a cosine omega t. So this is our expression for displacement. If I try to rotate this axis into a vertical axis, note that I could also project the motion similar to a sinusoidal function as what is shown by this expression. If this is the amplitude and this is my time, at time equals zero, displacement is maximum, then it gradually decreases to zero and then goes to negative A and the cycle goes on. So just a review, amplitude symbolized by A 
is the maximum displacement of the oscillating object from equilibrium position. On the other hand, period, symbolized by T, is the time required to complete one cycle. In relation to period, we have frequency symbolized by F. Frequency is the number of cycles per second and it's usually measured in hertz, abbreviated as HZ, and hertz is the SI unit of frequency. Frequency is mathematically expressed as the reciprocal of period. Recall that angular velocity is the time derivative of angular displacement. And from the point of view of oscillation, we can call omega as angular frequency. For one complete cycle, angular displacement is equal to 2 pi. And for one complete cycle, the time is period t. So replacing t here with f, we have angular frequency equals 2 pi f. So let me cut and paste this illustration here, this sketch here. So in experiments, sometimes the displacement do not coincide at the maximum. The graph is sometimes shifted away from the maximum displacement or amplitude. And if we have this kind of graph then in order to correct this equation for displacement we just need to add a phase phi for the phase shift in this graph so this is a more general way of writing displacement when the phase of your graph is shifted away from the maximum displacement when time is equal to zero and so on. Even if we add a phase shift here in the argument of cosine, period, the frequency, and amplitude remains the same. Returning to our figure, what if we want to measure the velocity of the oscillation of this object, the back and forth velocity? So recall that the definition of velocity is that it is the time derivative of displacement. Hence, we just need to get the time derivative of this equation to get the velocity of the object's simple harmonic motion. d over dt. We plug it here. a cosine omega t plus phi. By the way, phi here is a constant. So this becomes a amplitude times negative sine omega t plus phi times the derivative of this argument which is omega. So we'll end up with v sub x equals negative a omega sine omega t plus phi. This is our equation for the velocity of the object in simple harmonic motion. So lastly, what if we would like to calculate the acceleration of the object at a specific instance of time? Recall that acceleration is equal to the time derivative of velocity. Therefore, we just need to get the time derivative of this velocity to get acceleration. Acceleration is equal to the time derivative of this expression, which is a omega sine omega t plus p. This is equal to, this is a constant, negative a omega times the derivative of sine, which is cosine omega t plus phi times the derivative of the argument which is omega so times omega so our final expression is a sub x equals negative a omega squared cosine omega t plus phi so this is our expression for the acceleration of the object oscillating along the x-axis. So let me write down this equation on another artboard.
In this artboard, I have summarized the equations we derived earlier. And as you recall, when you have a cosine function or a sine function, their output is from negative 1 to positive 1. And each term here produces a unitless quantity. It doesn't have any unit. So let's focus first on this displacement equation. If cosine produces an output of 1, meaning to say at time t equals 0, and let's assume that the phase shift is 0, then the displacement is equal to the amplitude. The maximum value of the displacement is equal to the amplitude. And A here must have a unit of length. Now similarly, when it comes to this equation, since sine and its argument produces a unitless quantity and this term is equated on a velocity, therefore this a omega here must have a unit of velocity. And since the maximum value of sine theta is 1, then the maximum value of velocity is equal to a omega. So it depends on your direction. So we can attach a negative sign here if your convention is that when the velocity is going to the left, we can attach a negative sign here, something like that. So it depends. The important thing is, in general, if we are looking for the magnitude of the velocity, then we could just put an absolute value here and just calculate amplitude times omega. Similarly, for this equation, using the same argument, the maximum acceleration that the object can have is equal to the absolute value of this term, which is a omega squared. Going back to this oscillating object, what if we would like to calculate its frequency of vibration? If we have a mass spring system oscillating on a frictionless surface, we can calculate its frequency of vibration if we have knowledge of the object's mass m and the system's spring constant k. Let's grab a screenshot of this object oscillating along the x-axis. So let's assume that this is the equilibrium position of the block. And after some time, it has moved to its maximum displacement which we label as x equals a or amplitude along the y-axis. The forces acting on the block are its weight and normal force. But they cancel out since the object is not accelerating vertically. In other words, the normal force and its weight are equal. Next, along the x-axis, there's only one force and this is the spring force acting on the object. Since the spring force restores the object to its equilibrium position, we attach it with a negative sign. So F sub x is equal to negative kx. This is the only force acting on the object, so we equate this to ma. We already have a value for acceleration and displacement as what is shown in this slide. Let me copy this. I'm going to put it here. And then I'll copy this given. Okay, let me plug this equation here. For acceleration and for displacement, I'm going to plug this equation to the displacement. So we have mass times negative a omega squared cosine omega t plus phi equals negative k times this expression which is a cosine omega t plus phi. Amplitude on both sides cancel out, the entire cosine uh, factor cancels out, and we end up with negative m omega squared equals negative k. Writing this in terms of omega or angular frequency, omega is equal to square root of k over m. 
So this is the angular frequency of the object undergoing simple harmonic motion. Recall that from our previous discussion, we derived this expression, angular frequency is equal to 2 pi times frequency and frequency is equal to the reciprocal of period. Hence, we can write this in terms of frequency and period. So using this expression, 2 pi f equals square root of k over m which means that frequency is equal to 1 over 2 pi square root of spring constant k divided by mass. So this is the frequency of vibration of the object undergoing simple harmonic motion. Since frequency is equal to the reciprocal of period, I can write this in terms of period. Period is equal to 2 pi times square root of mass divided by spring constant. So this is the period of the object when it undergoes simple harmonic motion. This problem is from OpenStax University Physics Volume 1 Chapter on Oscillations. A mass m sub zero is attached to a spring and hung vertically. The mass is raised a short distance in the vertical direction and released. The mass oscillates with the frequency f sub zero. If the mass is replaced with a mass nine times as large and the experiment was repeated, what would be the frequency of the oscillations in terms of f sub zero? So imagine we have a spring that hangs vertically. So this is its equilibrium position. Equilibrium position is when the spring is neither stretched nor compressed. But if we add a block on this, apparently because of gravity, the spring will be stretched downwards. And after some time, it will reach a new equilibrium position. Now, if you try to raise this block a little higher, and then release it. Then it will oscillate back and forth. In other words, the effect of attaching a block on a vertically hanging spring just changes the position of the equilibrium point. Hence, the same equation still works. It's just that the direction of force and acceleration is along the y-axis. So negative ky, and this will result to the same equation of angular frequency, which is omega equals square root of k over m. Frequency is given by f sub zero, so we write this in terms of frequency and not angular frequency. Angular frequency is equal to 2 pi f, hence this is equal to k over m. So let's label this as f sub zero. Now the problem asks what would be the new frequency if we replace this block with mass nine times as large as the original one. So for mass equal to 9m, so I'll just use the same equation, f equals one over two pi square root of k divided by this time we have 9m. So we would like to write this frequency in terms of f sub zero. So I have to force this equation in such a way it will have some terms similar to f sub zero. So to do this, so I'm going to put it outside. So this is equivalent to f equals one over square root of nine times one over two pi square root of k over m. Apparently, this factor is now equal to f sub zero and square root of nine is equal to three times f sub zero. So this is the final answer. 
Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and hit the notification bell button for awesome updates. Thank you for watching.